Welcome to week number two's introduction for Viterbo's EDUC 599, the K-12 reading curriculum and instructional strategies. At the beginning of each week, I try to reflect on the previously, previously completed week with a flashback, synthesizing the information explored and your ideas, as well as clearing up any misconceptions that may have popped up. I then typically transition into our new week with an introduction of the activities, and this week will end with the exploration that you should be continuing to do, which is looking at a district literacy plan as we get closer to our culminating projects. Please make sure to complete the checklist on Moodle. Some of you have been consistent with checking off the items as you complete them, but some of you not so much. Remember that the workflow checklist is an easy way to accumulate participation points. On to our week. Week number one flashback. <clears throat> Reading the introductions forum was enlightening. Many of you are teaching at the elementary grades, but we have some interesting backgrounds and endorsements that will provide some different insights to the content we will be exploring. It was nice to get to know you in this digital space on a more personal level, as we all are in different stages of our lives and understanding that offers up a lot more insights as well. The Say the Last Word for Me forum was off to a great start as of what I saw at this presentation. Many of you mentioned choosing or using the same quote as a choice for this forum as someone else. Ugh, I do not like this at all. Welcome to week number two's video in introduction for Viterbo's EDUC 599, the K-12 reading curriculum and instructional strategies. At the beginning of each week, I re try to reflect upon the previous week with a flashback synthesizing the information explored and your ideas, as well as clearing up any misconceptions that may have popped up. I then transition on to our new week with an introduction of the activities. And for this week, I end reminding you of the exploration that you should be continuing to look at as we get closer to our culminating projects. Please make sure to complete the checklist on Moodle. Some of you have been consistent with checking off the items as you complete them, and some of you not so much. Remember the workflow checklist is an easy way to accumulate participation points. Now, on to our week. Week number one, flashback. In our getting to know you introductions, reading the introductions was enlightening. Many of you are teaching at the, in, in, at the elementary levels, but we have some interesting backgrounds and endorsements that will provide some different insights to the content we will be exploring. It was nice to get to know you in this digital space, on a more personal level. And it was interesting to find that we are all in different stages of our lives and understanding that offers up different insights as well. The Save the Last Word for Me forum was off to a great start as of this presentation. The last words obviously were not shared, but reading the comments allowed me to see that the strategy was on the right track. Many of you mentioned choosing or using the same quote as a choice for this forum or in our other forum as well. I always think of the quote, great minds think alike, when I see the comments and the conversations that happen through the Save the Last Word for Me forum. The Q&A forum had us looking at the common core state standards. And these standards have definitely made our teaching more rigorous and provided a scaffolding and spiraling of skills across all grade levels. If your district has an administrator who is an advocate in literacy skills, you are lucky. Many of you mentioned administration can offer professional development, encourage best practice teaching, and become knowledgeable themselves about literacy. As a literacy leader, you can alleviate some of these concerns of your fellow educators by encouraging the unpacking of the standards. This means taking a close look at the literacy standards in our Common Core and looking at the depth of knowledge needed for each. Literacy is a huge area to take on but we also need to be cognizant of the fact that some of these can fall into the discipline areas and can be worked on in social studies and science as well. Once you truly understand what the standards are asking and you've assigned a depth of knowledge for each of them, you would choose which, which standards are essential at your level, similar to essential learning outcomes. Which standards, as one of you mentioned, are non-negotiable and cannot be glossed over, but ones that we expect students to master by the end of that grade level year. After identifying your essential learning, think about what standards will fall under these outcomes and then work backwards. What do your students need to do, what do they need to know, and what do they need to use before they are able to master that standard? 
And then what other standards will they be practicing alongside your essential or non-negotiable standard? This is an area that needs to be agreed upon and consistent at each grade level and then can be brought to fruition in order for it to be successful. At first, it is quite daunting, but in the end, it will be beneficial to all involved. This is something that we have done at our district, and it helps a lot to alleviate the enormity of everything that you need to cover. But identifying what are your essential learning outcomes, what are your ELOs, that will help each of the teachers to focus in and hone in on those master standards. Also in the Q&A discussion forum, there seems to be a theme with the improvement of best practice at almost all of your districts, which happen to be in the area of technology. Our students, we can consider them to be digital natives. They were born in this world of 24-7 technology, while the rest of us are typically digital immigrants. We learn more about technology as it started to evolve, and sometimes we tend to fall behind in the latest and greatest that is out there. Part of the struggles with technology is that it is ever-changing, and unfortunately, our teaching world just hasn't caught up. I feel that we are starting to change the way we teach in schools, but the use of technology is one of the last we tend to catch up on, unless the educator is very tech-savvy. Some of you have great resources in your district to support the use of technology, and use that to your advantage. Make sure that you have explored and obtained your district's literacy plan. The main areas of focus for reflection on your plan will be mentioned at the end of this introductory video. Week number two. As we dive into our reading for week number two, chapters four, seven, and eight of our text, I've created a voice narrated presentation that covers information from the text Best Practice, Bringing Standards to Life in America's Classroom by Stephen Zemelin, Zemelin Harvey Smokey Daniels, and Arthur Hyde. As we are thinking about best practices in literacy and implementing a balanced literacy program, this information from another text presents us with seven general structures of best practice teaching, not necessarily focused in on literacy, but just in general. As you read the chapters from our text, you encounter information on best practice literacy instruction in our early learners who are learning to read, and then for our adolescent learners who are reading to learn. This is quite the shift and typically happens as students are transitioning from a totally different schedule of learning from the traditional inclusive elementary classrooms where the student is with the same teacher for most of the day to a schedule in middle and high school where they're traveling and learning from a variety of all different educators during the day. If all teachers are aware of best practice teaching, this will alleviate many issues of transition with students and the shift of their learning and accountability. As you listen and watch the presentation, connect it with ideas from the reading on early literacy instruction and adolescent literacy instruction in our text. You also will be expected to complete a chapter reflection, an assignment. Your chapter reflection is centered on what best practice literacy instruction you see as a need in your district from the perspective of a literacy leader. Utilize the ideas from the text as well as the ones from the presentation. Think about what best practice instruction would you want to see in your perfect school and how can you be a part of making it happen within your world. Enter the assignment description for more details. Assignments are typically due on Sunday night by midnight. The discussion forum for this week will focus on what you see to be the biggest change in elementary students learning to read and in the adolescent years that shift to reading to learn. How can administrators best support learners and learners in this transition? What evidence-based best practices are the most important in this shift? And what are the connections to the Common Core state standards? These will be the components for your discussion forum posts. Your initial posts will be due on Thursday with replies due by Sunday. And enter this forum for more details as well. Make sure you've explored and obtained your district's literacy plan. This is that continuing exploration that will lead us into our culminating projects. The main areas of focus for reflection on your plan, and eventually the one that you will choose to evaluate, are, on the, different, are the different components of those plans, which are the vision and goal statement. That's the articulation of what the goal or vision is in the district's focused improvement. On the professional support, what is a level of teacher support towards that district initiative? and how will administrators and educators keep apprised of how to best teach our students. Looking at the instruction and curriculum, 
Are they utilizing research-based practices? Are they implementing balanced literacy within their reading program and their literacy program? The intervention. What are their support systems for students that are struggling? And also, do they have something for those students who are surpassing their goals? Assessment. How do they collect their data? What is the data that they use in order to assess their literacy behaviors within their districts and their schools? And lastly, partnership. What is that school, family, community partnership? What's that collaboration like? Those are going to be the six main areas that you'll be looking at and evaluating in a different district's plan as well as in your own district in the end. So this is a quick introduction to what to expect in week number two of our course. Happy reading, and please enter those forms for more details on what the expectations are.